from Hunter College. Today, lecture number 11, the Cauchy Criterion. All right, so let's get started. What is the Cauchy Criterion? Well, by itself, it's pretty simple. You know how when we have a convergent sequence, like for example, 1 over n. So it starts from 1, it gets to 1 half, it gets to 1 third, then it gets to 1 fourth, then it gets to 1 fifth, and 1 sixth, and 1 seventh, and 1 eighth, and 1 ninth, and eventually, when you try to draw all of the terms, they become the jumbled mess. Essentially, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 approaches a very small value. You could say even 0. Now, this method, a lot of the times in the past, to figure out if something converges, we've had to take a hypothetical limit that we've already known and then test to see if it converges to that limit. We don't want to do guess and check in some situations. So the Cauchy criterion will help us like not do that because instead of measuring the difference between a specific term and the limit, we're measuring the difference between a specific term and another term. So essentially what we want to do is say that after some specific stopping point, this is our point of no return, after that, every other term will be in some radius of this term. Right over here, right over here, right over here, right over here, right over here. Somewhere in this epsilon radius. So, essentially, how do we formalize that notion? Mm. Uh, for all epsilon is greater than zero, there exists a natural number, capital N, such that for all MN, which are greater than or equal to N, AM minus AN is within this epsilon neighborhood, or in other words, less than epsilon. This is very, very important. So now, this is, and you probably trust me on this, an alternate definition for convergence. But how do we know that? We prove so many theorems using convergence. So can we prove that the Cauchy criterion is equivalent to convergence? Well, here's what we're going to do. So first, we're going to prove a lemma to help us do this. So this lemma is that every Cauchy sequence is implied to be bounded. It has an upper bound and a lower bound. And how can we find that out? Well, pretty simple. M, the upper bound is just the maximum of, it's just greater than or equal to the maximum of <coughs> A0, A1, A2, A3, dot, 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 until we get a n minus 1, and then our point of no return plus epsilon. Why is this true? Well, because once we get into the zone of no return around a n plus or minus epsilon, if every single term before that was less than a n, so like a n minus 1 wasn't here or anything, which it very well could be, then we have to take a n plus e as the upper bound of the sequence, of course, because there are still a bunch of other little fellows that can write it a b in here. And we don't want to have to account for those, so accounting for a finite amount of numbers allows us to actually take the maximum of all of them. And, of course, if we want the lower bound, we just change this max to a min. Or, and we want to also change this to a minus epsilon. Every single number was greater than it. But I think you guys can see that. Here's what we're going to prove. Every Cauchy sequence converges. 
and every converted sequence is a Cauchy sequence. So essentially, we're going to replace convergence. That doesn't mean our little buddy epsilon will be gone, though. They'll still be there in some of our proofs, but we're going to see them a little bit less. So, something is a Cauchy sequence if and only if it is convergent. And you know what that means. There were two proof directions and a sufficient proof. All right, so let's start with the necessary proof. And this is actually the easier half. So here's the idea. Let's suppose that an converges, that's the problem statement, prove that an is Cauchy. That's our goal. So, essentially, suppose an converges, so then that means an minus the limit is less than epsilon for all epsilon is greater than zero if n is greater than or equal to some n in the natural numbers. You know, that's the usual routine. So, what we can say then is that We have two terms in our sequence, AM and AN. So we have AM minus our limit plus our limit minus AN. And we can say this is less than AM minus L plus AN minus L. So in other words, oh wait, oops, this is AN is Cauchy, prove AN is convergent. Wait, where is it? No, it's an is convergent proof. An is Cauchy. Oops, sorry. Maybe you should cut that part out. Yeah. Okay. So we're back in the game. So we know since an is convergent, as we've stated, a m minus l and a n minus l both are able to be less than epsilon and epsilon over 2 for sufficiently large m and n, which are greater than or equal to our n that we stated previously. So then, since this is in total less than or equal, not the subset sign, less than or equal to epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is equivalent to epsilon, then we can say that this is actually strictly less than a m minus a n is less than epsilon, which is literally just our definition for Cauchy. So, if we're formally proving it now, we can say that for all epsilon is greater than zero, there exists a natural number n such that if n is greater than or equal to n, then a n minus our limit, L, is less than epsilon over 2. So with that, now if m and n are greater than or equal to n, then a m minus L plus a n minus L is definitely less than epsilon. But we can say that a m minus L plus L minus a n, and we can swap the positive and negative signs because it's an absolute value, is less than or equal to this, which is less than this, hence a m minus a n is less than epsilon, so it's proved. But that's only one half of our proof, of course. We also have to do the other half. 
which is the sufficient half. Suppose an is Cauchy proves that it converges. Let me switch chalks because this one is getting low. So let me see if this one works. Yeah, it works fine, but not as juicy. So. Maybe use this one, this one, this Okay. So suppose an is Cauchy. We already know an is bounded by that lemma we proved earlier. So. By the bolzano weierstrass theorem that we learned yesterday, an has a converted subsequence since it's bounded. So then, this subsequence converges to L. Now we're going to show that we already know if a n converges, every single subsequence of it also converges to the same exact limit. So we're going to show that a sub n sub k converges to the same limit as a n really quickly, just like this. So we know since it's Cauchy, there's already an a n, which is greater than or equal to n, and we have a n k, which is also greater than or equal to n. So, I mean, if you really want to be deliberate, you can put this just to make sure that this is a term that is after a capital N. So, we know that a n n minus a n, absolute value, of course, so the difference between them has to be less than epsilon, and we also know, since our sequence is convergent, a n k minus l has to be less than epsilon for some k. So now, this can be anything which is n, but also greater than n. So, for all k greater than equal to n. So then, what do we do from here? Well, we can say that a n minus l, with another triangle inequality trick, is a n minus a k a n k plus a n k minus l, which is less than or equal to a n minus a n k plus l minus a n k. Or actually, I should swap these around to say a n k minus a n plus a n k minus l. But wait a moment. We've already made this less than epsilon and this less than epsilon. We want to be thorough. We can say this is less than epsilon over 2. That's less than epsilon over 2. So in total, we say this is less than epsilon. So then, since a n minus l is less than epsilon, that's our definition of convergence proved. So essentially, what did we do today? We just used a triangle inequality very cleverly to show that a n is Cauchy because it follows the criterion of a m and a n being very close together, and a n is bounded if uh, a n is convergent if a n is Cauchy by proving that a n minus the limit has to be less than epsilon. So essentially, that's what we did today. We proved both the necessary and sufficient, which means that our goal has been fulfilled. So thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one.